kayaking is generally a pretty intuitive activity and you don't need necessarily a lot of instruction if you're just going to go out and play around in, a, in the, a small lake or a river but by developing proper technique especially for the three essential kayak strokes you'll be able to paddle more efficiently more effectively and you'll have a lot more control over your kayak and so in this video we're looking at the three essential strokes for kayaking let's get into it now before we get into specific strokes let's talk about your paddle your hands should be holding the paddle an equal distance from the blades and your hand should be slightly more than shoulder width apart an easy way to check your grip is to put your paddle on your head like this and your arms should make roughly a 90 degree bend if your hands are too close that's a lot less than 90 degrees now you should have a pretty relaxed grip on your paddle this is not a death grip kind of thing you're quickly going to tire out you're going to get tendonitis if you keep if you paddle for a long time so a nice relaxed grip we're going to assume in this case that you're using a paddle with no feather and what no feather or twist means is the blades are lined up with each other now some kayak paddles a lot of kayak paddles come with twist where the blades are offset from one another obviously this paddle provides that option uh, now i myself prefer to use a paddle with no twist and i just find it's more intuitive to use and it's something i've I've moved towards over 30 years of paddling. In fact, I started paddling with a 90 degree twist paddle. I ended up getting tendonitis in my wrist and I moved to a 60 degree, and then I moved to a 30 degree, and then I moved to a 15 degree, and ultimately I settled on a no twist paddle. This is what I prefer for any type of paddling. You know, there's no right or wrong, it's personal preference. But for this video and for simplicity's sake, we're gonna assume you're using a paddle that has no twist. Something else that's very important before we get into the three techniques, and that's your sitting position. You wanna be sitting in an active paddling position. Now, modern kayaks like this one have really comfortable seats. And this one's got a great back band, you know, more recreational kayaks will have high back seats and you can just lounge in those and they're awesome. They are awesome but they're not awesome for paddling per se. You don't want to be kicking back in the lazy boy when you're paddling. When you're paddling, you're sitting up, your feet, the balls of your feet should be on the foot pegs or the, or the braces, whatever you have. And that should bend your knees slightly, not too much. And your legs should be splayed out to the side. And that's how I'm sitting right now in here. So sitting up like this, comfortable, active position you're ready for the three strokes and so let's get into the first and probably the most important stroke the forward stroke now when we talk about the forward stroke any stroke that gets your kayak moving is totally fine uh, but by developing good technique you're going to be, be able to paddle a lot further with a lot less discomfort and so that's what we're going to look at right now and let's start by looking at the catch phase of the stroke which is really the start of the stroke when your blade enters the water when i reach for the stroke i'm not just reaching with my arms i'm reaching with my shoulder by turning at the waist and when i do that i've effectively wound up my body and now i'm i'm accessing something that's called torso rotation. This is how you get your core muscles, not just your arms, into every stroke you take. It's an absolutely key concept for any kayaking stroke. We're gonna get into it a bit more, but for right now, the catch uh, phase involves reaching with the shoulder, turning at the waist, and then planting the blade fully in the water. Then you're ready to pull. Now. When you pull on the stroke, you're not just pulling with your arms, you're unwinding your body. And 
That's how you're harnessing the power of torso rotation. Now, as you pull this blade through the water, you keep pulling it alongside the kayak until it gets to a point just past your hip, and that's when the stroke ends and you slice the blade out of the water. Now, as you're pulling on this stroke and unwinding your body to pull that blade through the water, what is your top hand doing? Well, your top hand is in, involved as well. What it's gonna do is it's gonna push forward at around eye level. Some people call it punching forward and that's fine. I don't like to call it punching forward because it's not a aggressive, it's not a punch forward. It's really a, a push forward to help move that paddle through the water. Now something else to keep in mind when you're forward paddling is that it's not just your upper body that's involved. Your lower body is involved as well, or it certainly can be. You'll get more power for your stroke. And the way you get your lower body involved is I'm actually pushing off the foot peg on the stroke, the side that I'm stroking on. So if I'm taking a stroke on the left side, I'm pushing on that left foot peg to give my stroke some more oomph. Same thing when I take a stroke on the right side, I'm pushing off the right foot peg. It's hard to see in this boat, but it's very noticeable on sit on top kayaks where the legs are exposed. Putting all those things together, the stroke starts at the toes, get the blade fully in the water, your body's wound up, you're pulling that blade through the water, unwinding your body, using your core muscles as much as possible. As the paddle passes the hip, it comes out of the water, and then you're almost in position for the next stroke. It's simply a matter of reaching a bit, full, bit more forward with the shoulder, dropping that blade into the water, and doing it again. If you don't truly believe in how important the torso rotation is for the forward stroke, then here's something you can try, is try paddling with your arms completely locked straight. If your arms are locked straight, you're not pulling with your arms on the paddle blades. The only way you can paddle is by rotating your upper body. Now, it's not gonna be comfortable to do this, but you'll be amazed at how effectively you can drive your boat forward without using your arms at all, just through torso rotation. That's pretty much it for the forward stroke. Of course, you can get into a lot more of the minutia of getting the most out of each part of the forward stroke. But once again, we're not really worried about shaving tenths of seconds right uh, off your time here. We're, we're really more worried about applying fundamental principles to your forward stroke. So let's get on to the next one. And that's the sweep stroke. Now, depending on the type of kayak you have, it may be designed to turn very well, or it may be designed not to turn well, but to go straight very well. Either way, the sweep stroke is the best way to turn a kayak. And there's two types of sweep stroke that we're gonna be looking at. The forward sweep and the reverse sweep. Now, starting with the forward sweep. Very simply, it starts by winding up your body, turning at the waist as much as possible, and reaching past the toes ideally to plant your blade fully in the water. Once your blade is fully in the water, instead of pulling alongside your kayak like a forward stroke, you're gonna be sweeping a wide arc as far out to the side of the kayak as you comfortably can, while your front or your other hand stays nice and low in front of your stomach. You're gonna to continue to sweep that wide arc right until the point where your, uh, before your paddle blade hits the kayak, that's when you slice it out and your sweep stroke's done. Like the forward stroke, torso rotation is an absolutely key part of the equation. And how do you apply torso rotation to the sweep stroke? Well, you, you turn the, you wind up your body when you start and you unwind your body through the whole motion. A great way to help help force you to use torso rotation is to watch your active blade through the whole motion. By watching that blade right to the end, I'm, having, I'm almost forced to turn my whole upper body. 
A slightly more advanced version of the forward sweep stroke simply involves tilting your kayak into the stroke. If I tilt my kayak, you have to be comfortable balancing a kayak on edge to do this, but if I can balance my kayak on edge uh, into the sweep stroke, then as I take the sweep stroke, the boat is gonna turn even more efficiently. Typically, it's used by touring kayakers, sea kayakers that have kayaks that aren't designed to turn well. Recreational kayaks tend to turn very well and you don't need to do that. You don't need to flirt with disaster if you don't want to. That brings us to the reverse sweep. The reverse sweep really is what it sounds like. It's the forward sweep done in reverse. And so you're gonna start with your body completely wound up, paddle in at the back of the boat, the stern, and my body's turned completely around, wound aggressively to uh, face the blade. Now I'm gonna sweep as wide an arc out to the side of the kayak as possible, right to the front of the boat. The power for the stroke is all coming from torso rotation, unwinding. I'm not really pushing with my arms at all. Plant the blade and I'm unwinding the body. Once again, a more advanced version of the stroke involves tilting the boat slightly into the stroke. I gotta be very balanced, uh, be able to hold this boat on edge without uh, worrying about flipping. Now when I take the stroke, the boat likes to spin that much more. We've already learned how to go forward. We've learned how to turn. So what's the draw stroke? It's not going backwards. The draw stroke is moving your kayak's kayak laterally or sideways. Uh, and the way we're gonna do that, well, I'll show you the, the, the basic draw stroke to begin with. The basic draw stroke simply involves turning your body to face the direction you want to go, twisting at the waist, torso rotation, and then reaching out with your blade uh, pretty much straight out from the hip. And then I'm going to draw the water to the hip. Before the blade hits the side of the boat though, I got to slice it out of the water and start again. Different boats draw differently. What I mean by that is that some boats, the sterns, uh, maybe there's a, a skeg down, or maybe it just has a sharper keel, and that stern doesn't move as easily as the bow. If you find the boat turning instead of drawing laterally, it just means you have to change slightly where you're drawing. Instead of drawing straight to the hip, you might have to draw slightly forward of the hip, or maybe slightly behind the hip. You just have to play around with that until you find the sweet spot. But something else to think about with the basic draw. As I'm turned, I'm reaching for that, that stroke. My top hand really isn't very active. It's acting more like a pivot as I pull that blade into me. Now, a little sexier version of the basic draw is the knifing draw. And all that involves is instead of slicing the blade out of the water when I'm done, I'm actually just going to rotate my wrists 90 degrees so I can slice the blade back to where it started and take another stroke. Rotate 90 degrees, slide out, take another. Now, a third version of the draw that we're not going to get into detail right now about, but I am going to show you because it's cool and ultimately you're going to want to learn it. It's the sculling draw. And the sculling draw is a really cool way of applying steady pressure on your draw stroke without having that recovery. You don't have to slice the blade out of the water behind you. You don't have to slice the blade back to where it started. You can apply steady pressure by putting your, your blade on the right angle as it glides back and forth through the water. And that looks like this. And if you notice a couple of things when I'm doing this. For one, my arms are hardly moving at all. It's all my torso rotating back and forth that are driving the paddle blade through the water. Now that's an advanced technique that it will take some time to learn. It requires some real paddle dexterity, something that comes with time on the water. It's a good excuse to spend more time paddling though. <laughs> and so those are the three 
essential kayaking techniques. Again, this is a really high level view of these three techniques. We're not going into the finer details. We could, we could go into the minutia, but that can be overwhelming. The most important thing is that you understand the principles, the fundamental principles of these three strokes so that you can dramatically improve your paddling. If not, move it to an Olympic level right off, right off the top. Hopefully you found this video helpful. If you did, give it a big thumbs up and stay tuned. Subscribe to Paddle TV if you haven't already because uh, we got lots more paddling tips, paddling gear reviews, paddle tales, paddling adventures, all sorts of stuff coming.